press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Lombok is a compile time annotation processor. What do I mean by that? It's a plugin. However, it does something more than that. So this is the plugin which I have in IntelliJ. You can also install it. I'll show you what it does for us in the JVM. We need to add the dependency for Lombok. I'm going to add the dependency for Lombok so that we can add these annotations into a Java Pojo. So the artifact ID will be Lombok and the group ID is org.projectlombok. Since this is the Spring Boot application, by default, I'm going to get this particular version of Lombok because this is defined in, in the Spring dependencies directly. So if you notice here, this is the version of Lombok which I have, 1.18.2. So that's the version of Lombok I have. This is the Spring Boot application, but uh, I'm just going to use this particular application which we designed in the previous video. I'm going to create a Pojo. Let's call this Pojo as user. I'm going to call this particular plain Java object as user. Usually what we do is we do use this for creating our models. Before Lombok came into picture, let's consider some variables. I'll show you where it is helpful and how. So let's imagine that there are few uh, name salary and then we need an ID. So I'll just say integer ID. So these are different variables. And if you need to create these getters and setters, we always use this feature from IntelliJ, isn't it? So you just say getters and setters. This is going to create your getters and setters by default. If I need to have a equals and hash code, I'll just use whatever equals and hash code I want and it gets generated. So equals and hash code both are generated. Same way if I need to do a two string override, I can do it as well. So this is how IntelliJ helped us in generating this POJO within few seconds, isn't it? However, what if I don't even have to do this as well? So that is what Lombok does. Lombok helps you in adding annotations and generating these code out of the box. So we added the dependencies. Now what? I'll add these annotations. For example, we did the getters and setters. So I'm going to say getter. This will add a getter on all these names of these particular user. So let's try uh, creating a class where I can uh, user main. Let me call it as user main. I'll just try to use this user class which we created so that I can show you how this compile time annotation processor works. So right now there are no constructors. I'm going to use this object. By default, all these getters are created because we added this getter here. If I remove this particular getter, I should not see this. If I, oh, let me do it. So if I remove this getter, I should not see any getter here. See this, right? There is no getter as such. So now let's try adding the getter back. So let me do an import of Lombok. This should now get our methods for accessing the gets. Yeah, see that the user dot get now I'm able to do the gets previously I was not able to now I can do the gets here same way with setters there is no set here there is no set option as such let's go through the setter so this is another annotation from again Lombok this will add the setters for this particular class see that the setters are now there now I want to have some constructors basically there is no constructors isn't it so I'll just pass uh, some name called Sam and I want to pass an long value and I want to pass an integer. So this doesn't work. If you see that, it doesn't work because there are no con uh, constructors, isn't it? Now in order to create these constructor, you can have different uh, annotations. There is something called all argument constructor. This is going to create arguments for every, every object. So see that the compilation error has gone now. If I don't want to have any constructor, I can just do no ox constructor. I can just do a no ox constructor. See that there is a no ox, so it is expecting me to remove these. Now let's change this to the all ox constructor because we need these arguments. Also, if we need to print the two string, usually we do override the two string, right? Instead, you can just do a dot two string. This will now create your um, two string method by default with name salary and id if i want to override my equals and hash code you can do the same you can just say hash equals at equals and hash code this will again create the equals and hash code based on the variables which are there inside 
now if you are using a data class for example a pojo so this is a pojo and this is a model right so which is the data class so when we are using data class you can ignore all these instead you can just wrap it up with add data so even with add data you will be getting all these arguments so i'll just say add all args constructor because we need to get this out we need to have the constructor and you can get the getters you can get the setters you can see the equals you can see the hash code all these are overwritten that's why they are showing up as bold in IntelliJ right so that is how you can create a data class so when you say data internally it wraps up all those annotations and if you want a specific value to have a specific annotation you can have that for example if you want to have only getter here to the name you can add it here let's say you want to have a final variable and you don't have to provide a set so in that case you can have a variable as final and if you notice here lombok will by default remove the set see that there is no set name you can do a get name but there is no set name that is how lombok identifies what needs to be added and what should not be added so that is how we can flag these variables using lombok now imagine we want to convert this into a builder class i can just do a builder and automatically this gets converted into a builder class how do we generally do a builder right let's convert this usually what we do is we use user dot builder so that is the static method which is already created and you can see the name you can provide the name as sam and you can provide the id as uh, one two and you can provide the salary as one two three l so this is how you can provide as well so this is a builder pattern so automatically Lombok creates these builder pattern based on these annotations. So this is why Lombok is very powerful and it is very useful because you don't have to write all those code for getting and setting where we are not going to do anything at all. That is what Lombok helps us in solving. So these are uh, major features which Java is trying to address as well. For example, data class or um, they call it records in java so if you see in kotlin it is called as data class where you can automatically create these getters setters and all these constructor based code by default however here lombok helps us in creating these even though we are working on the jvm so that is why lombok is called the annotation compile time annotation processor and you can use it with any ide if you have eclipse you have lombok plugin and same way with intellij you have lombok plugin you need to add that as a dependency into your project so that these are used when the project runs so this is how you can use lombok with intellij i hope you found this particular video interesting as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much